right, guys, so let's talk about fasting. Fasting is uh, a very popular regime, especially lately, and in some respects, it has always been a popular approach to helping with health and potentially with fat loss. And the key word there is potentially. So I want to go through a couple things first about what happens when you skip food, why this may be good for people and why it may not be good for people. So one of the things you have to understand is anytime you eat, anytime you eat food, you are going to secrete the hormone insulin, okay? So insulin is not necessarily a bad guy. Insulin helps our food get inside our cell. Its major job is to, when you eat, to take the glucose from the food, the amino acids from that food, and the fatty acids, the fat from that food, and get, the, get all those nutrients into the cell, but primarily, glucose. It really helps to control glucose and lower blood glucose levels. The problem is, is that insulin both turns off fat burning, so it blocks fat burning, and it also increases fat storage. Now, here's the trick. If insulin is working for you, no issues at all, right? If you are insulin sensitive in all your tissues, brain cells, fat cells, muscle cells, liver cells, if you are sensitive to insulin in all those tissues, your metabolism will respond normally and you will usually stay pretty lean. The problem is you can become resistant to insulin in many different tissues. And the two ways that you can become resistant to insulin, one way is through food, and the other way you can become resistant to insulin is through stress because of the hormone cortisol can make you insulin resistant. So what does insulin resistance mean? Think about walking into a room with a very strong smell. When you first go into that room, you could smell it. Your eyes may water, you may have to cover your nose, but after a little while of being in that room, the smell goes away, right? You become resistant to it. Well, that's what happens to the body when insulin is around for a long period of time or there's a lot of stress around. The body can no longer hear insulin's signal. Therefore, the body has to make more insulin and you get more of an effect on blunting fat burning and more of an effect on fat storage. And this is why you have people who have a very difficult time losing fat sometimes because insulin becomes a really big issue here. Now, any time that you forego food, any time that you decrease food intake, doesn't matter if it's carbohydrate, fat, or protein, you will lower insulin levels. Now, obviously, if insulin, if the reason you became insulin resistant in the first place is because you had too much insulin around, then lowering insulin will reverse insulin resistance. And that is absolutely true. The best way to do this is to just forego carbohydrates, but the fastest way to do it is to forego all food. So all food And what happens when you forgo all food? Insulin levels drop very fast. Now, here's the issue though. When you forgo food, what else happens? You get compensatory eating reactions. In other words, your body kicks into effect hunger, energy, and cravings, what I call HEC. And this is why many people will have a tiny little salad for lunch and maybe a very small piece of fruit or cereal for breakfast, which is essentially a modified fast during the day, and then get home and binge like crazy because their body is programmed to eat. So that's the downfall of fasting. It, it can put into effect these compensatory reactions. The other thing that fasting does is in some people, not all, it will drastically raise cortisol levels, and it also will raise a hunger hormone called ghrelin. And this is what these two hormones, both cortisol and ghrelin, 
are partly, mostly responsible for the increased hunger, energy, and cravings that fasting creates. The other thing that fasting can do is fasting can strip the body of muscle mass. And the reason it does that is because when the body is left without glucose, it will want to make its own. So it will produce glucose from muscle. So for many people, fasting will do several things. One, it will increase hunger, energy, and cravings, making them more likely to eat more of the wrong foods later. So it works against their fat loss results in the long run. The other thing it do is it can spare muscle. So people who fast and people who eat very low calorie diets can actually end up fatter in the long run. So you might say, well, why would anyone want to do this? Well, because the interesting thing is, is that for some people, Fasting can be very beneficial because what fasting does, if you're able to do it and not binge, there are people who can fast all day long and get to the next day and eat normally. So they have this fast and then they eat normally. They don't necessarily binge like crazy, but they also don't eat just diet food either. And some people can do very well on this. What they can do is they can actually end up lowering insulin. They don't get too much of a cortisol effect, right? So cortisol levels stay sort of normal. And they also don't really get too much of a muscle effect. So their muscle, they don't lose a lot of muscle. These people are naturally anabolic. And so what begins happening for these individuals is they can see a big time fat loss from this. So these protocols can work pretty good. And the truth of the matter is, is that the shorter the fast, a fast lasting, you know, 12 to 36 hours, usually is not going to be long enough to see too much of these muscle wasting effects. So really, what we're looking at is if we can keep the fast short, short duration fast, we don't need to worry so much about anything regarding muscle because we can easily put that muscle back on, but we do need to still pay attention to hunger, energy, and cravings. So the point is this, how do you know if you're someone who should do a fast? You're someone who might do well with a fast if you're a person who can go long periods of time without eating and still eat relatively healthy foods. You're someone that might do well on a fast if you can skip a day of eating, wake up and eat normally the next day. This is something that may actually work for you. How do you know? Well, you do trial and error, just like we do everything in the fat loss lifestyle, and you see how this works. There are several ways to do this that I want to talk to you about, but the first thing, or one more thing rather, that I want to talk to you about is what can happen uh, short term when you fast and kind of give you an idea so you can decipher some of the reactions you're getting to fasting. 